and like you said, I think preparation was another factor and a big factor in for myself and for a lot of people is like how you're how much time you're able to prepare before an event, you know, going into any event, if you're able to prepare and you feel confident in your preparation, obviously going into the event, you're going to feel a lot more confident and going into BC one again, because I had competed so much before that uh, leading up to it, I felt really confident in all my moves in my abilities in my flow and everything. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Stance Elements. I'm Chaz B. I am your host. And today's show is brought to you by one of a hundred. You see me wearing the hoodie. It is so bloody comfy. Check them out at weareoneof100.co.uk and use the code STANCE15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. So after you've checked out their online shop, use the code STANCE15 at checkout. And you can get yourself this for 15% off. Now, without further ado, I've got Phil Wizard with me from United Rivals. What's up, man? Hello, hello. What's up? It's good to have you on, man. How's things? Uh, good. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, everything's good. You know, it's kind of a, a, a chill time, I feel like, more so than anything. And things are starting to pick up again. But uh, I've been enjoying the little break after kind of intense end of the year last year. That's good, man. Yeah, it has been an intense year, especially at the later end. We we saw you make the runners up at the Red Bull BC One, but also at the WDSF World Finals as well. Um, I do just want to talk to you first about the Red Bull BC One because it was your second uh, showing there. You did the first one. Sorry, your first one was in two thousand and nineteen. Then your second appearance was in twenty twenty one, and at the first one. You got knocked out of the first round, but at your last show, you made it to the finals. So what's happened since then? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's interesting because the 2019 was kind of like right pre-pandemic. And then the 20, uh, the last year's edition was kind of in the middle of it, but it looked like things were ending. And so it was one of the bigger events that was happening kind of during that time. Uh, so there was a lot of time for me to, I guess, train and develop myself in between. 2019 was my first showing at BC1 and BC1 was always a dream. Like, uh, and I'm very open about saying that, like BC1 has always been a dream for me. And it was the first event that I ever saw on YouTube. Like when I first started breaking, the first event I ever saw was Lilu versus Cloud in 2009. That was the first YouTube video I saw of breaking. And I remember seeing that and be like, whoa, like this is so cool. Like breaking is so cool. And I can't believe that it exists on this level, like on this kind of platform. Uh, so it was always a dream for me to go. So 2019, there, were, I, there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself for that event. Um, I had a good year that year. I had one undisputed, I had one IBE and I was performing well. Um, and I thought I had to like prove myself at that event, you know, that I could win, that I could do well. And I put too much pressure on myself. And that was kind of my mistake as I put so much pressure on this one event that I had to win, as opposed to thinking of representing myself and just representing my style and, and having fun and, and that kind of route, which, um, I'll talk about after, but that's the route that I feel like I do best in. I really just thought about, I wanted to win and I wanted to prove myself and I wanted to like, this is a dream. I got to do my best kind of thing. And so I relied heavily on, and I think because it's like a BC one stage when you're on that stage, like, again, just a self-imposed pressure. I felt like I had to do my moves, like my big moves, all only my big moves. And so it disrupted a lot of my performance because it disrupted my flow. I would like kind of stop halfway and then I would do another like banger like one of my big moves that don't act, doesn't actually connect well together. But I just thought like, ah, I had to do another big move, especially battling someone like Kazuki Ra, who is kind of like a big move after a big move after a big move, you know? And so there was a lot of pressure that I just kind of put on myself at that event. I think that year as well, I had like a, a extremely busy year. And so leading up to it, like my training wasn't entirely proper. I was just kind of competing a lot, but I wasn't really honing in on my training. Um, and to be completely honest, 2019, like BC1, to me personally, is one of the worst performances I've had on a big stage. And so I'm not like super proud of that performance, but I think it was an extremely important learning lesson for me. And it kind of changed my breaking after that in terms of not 
putting so much pressure on one event ever and just enjoying the journey. I, as cheesy as that sounds, like I, I don't put any pressure on one set event anymore because of that, because I realized putting so much pressure on this one moment really could take away from my performance more than anything. And so after BC1 2019, like a few months after, I was kind of like lost because I felt like this was the pinnacle of what I, like this was a dream, you know, and I, I performed so poorly that I was kind of in a low state for a few months. Um, and then honestly, it kind of worked out for me uh, personally with the pandemic, just having that time where there was no events and that I had to kind of relearn to train and relearn to do this completely for the love of it, as opposed to uh, competing. And not that I didn't stop loving it. It's just the fact that like when you're on constantly competing, which I did in 2019, uh, especially, it's just like, you're always thinking about the next event. Okay, I have to get ready. I have to just practice my moves. Whereas the way I like to dance just in general is just to go to practice and just enjoy it and create and do that. And so I really got to do that for the last two years before uh, this BC one in 2021. And um, because of that, I really got to develop my style further. I got to train more. I got to work on the things I really wanted to work on. And I got to just love the dance again. Basically, I got to fall in love uh, with it again. And then leading into BC1, uh, the last BC1 that happened, I competed as much as I could like the few months before that. But every event, I approached it not really caring. And I mean that in the sense that like when I go, of course, I'm going to try to win and I want to win. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I train up until that point as hard as I can. And when I get to that day of the event, it doesn't matter. Like win or lose, um, I'm obviously going to try my best to win. But most importantly, I'm there and I'm just soaking up the experience and having fun and being grateful. And especially going into BC1 2021, I felt like in 2019, I was so focused on the win. I wasn't just enjoying my time that I wasn't enjoying the experience. I wasn't like hanging out with people, whatever. I was so focused uh, like on winning. You know, and so going into 2021, it was a completely different experience. I went into it just being like, I don't care about how I do. If I lose first round, I lose first round. Obviously, I'm going to try my best to win. Um, but if I lose it, I lose, you know, so I, I really got to soak up the experience that time. I put way less pressure on myself. And again, I feel like that's when I do my best is because I didn't put that self-imposed pressure. I was really grateful just to be there on the stage. Like every time when I went out on stage, I was just having fun. I was looking around. I, I, I found uh, Ills and Jerry. Jared, uh, who are the people that I traveled with, Ills obviously being my crewmate, Jared being the Red Bull Canada manager, who's like a really good friend of mine. And so I would just look out to them and wave at them and just being like, yeah, I'm here, you know? So I feel like I approached it much more authentically in 2021. And I think that really translated into my performance as well. And from what other people have told me, that's what that people kind of enjoyed about it as well. I was just having fun. I think I was probably having the most fun on that stage because I didn't put any pressure on myself. I, didn't, I honestly didn't care if I lost. And when I lost in the finals, I didn't care. Like when I lost, I knew Amir won. Like that, that's how I felt as well. Um, like I felt like he won and, but it didn't bother me. Like I wasn't sad. I was just like, oh, I made it to the finals. This is amazing, you know? And I think having that attitude, uh, that perspective shift, um, not just at this event, but every single event moving forward, it was, uh, of kind of the biggest game changer for me just to recognize like one event doesn't really matter don't put so much pressure on one event you're going to do so many events in your lifetime I'll do more BC ones in my lifetime um, this is where I'm at at this stage of my breaking career and that's what I'll show I'll do the best that I can but that's all I can do and then if I lose I lose and I, I learn from it and I do my best uh, for the next one so with that mental shift that you had how did you work on it how did you work on yourself to lead up into that moment where the pressure wasn't there it's hardly like it snaps and then it goes away there must have been a lot yeah. of work yeah again i think 2019 bc1 was kind of the really big pushing factor for that one just recognizing at that moment like oh i can't put so much pressure on one event and so leading up to that i put less pressure on uh, everything that was related to breaking, everything, even just going into practice, not putting pressure on like, oh, I have to do this at practice. I have to do this. I just started approaching everything with the mentality of like having fun. And again, as cheesy as that sounds, um, I just wanted to enjoy it. So I just enjoyed the daily grind of going to practice and finding ways to enjoy practice and doing what I really enjoyed. And then every time I competed, um, I kind of challenged myself, first of all, because like I think most people, myself included, I, used, I have like a move book, right? So I have a move book on my phone. And so I challenged myself not to look at my move book. And I started doing that, right? And so like at practice and stuff, I might 
take a look at it. But when I'm battling, I don't look at it anymore because again, it's just the pressure of like, oh, I'm thinking too much of like, I have to win and I have to do these moves to win. Instead, I'm going to do what I usually do at practice, which just, I'm going to allow it to come out naturally. And that's a difficult thing to do because uh, a practice setting and a competition setting are obviously completely different. The amount of pressure that is in a competition setting, when you're in a competition, you have to go out even if you don't want to. There's a lot more pressure in that regard, uh, but just kind of learning to adapt to it. And it comes with just experience. I think I did it over time. And again, that's why leading into BC1, I think I had competed like every week before that, um, just because I wanted to get used to competing again and get used to just like not really caring in a competition and pushing that, like going into each event, like, and it was the same with BC1. I didn't look at my moves until the finals. And then that's where, again, that's also a reason why I felt like I lost is because I switched my mentality. Cause I was like, oh, I'm in the finals, I have to win, you know? And so that's a regard, uh, a reg not, not necessarily a regret, but something I would do differently next time is like, I leading up into the finals, I had this mentality of just having fun and I still enjoyed the finals, but then I put too much more, I put much more pressure on winning because I was still close. And so I had looked at my move book and I was like thinking about the moves I had to do. And I think I do a lot better when I just allow it to happen naturally. Um, but it comes from experience. So and I think everything in breaking and in, in life, again, just as cheesy as that sounds, it comes from experience. Like someone could tell you this. I could tell this to someone that you just can't put pressure on an event, but they won't learn it until they put so much pressure on an event and they realize that it's detrimental to them or they realize it works for them. Like whatever the case may be, you can, someone can tell you something, but you won't un truly understand it until you live it. And so I've lived it in BC1 2019. And then I experimented with how I was approaching battles leading up to BC1. And then I kind of found the thing that worked for me, which is just to focus on having fun, being grateful and just enjoying that moment. It sounds like a lot of the pressure was taken off you because you were ready for it. And perhaps those that put a lot of pressure on themselves are maybe anxious about their performance. They're probably thinking that they've missed a couple of sessions. They've missed mm -hmm. something in their head. I'm assuming that during the pandemic, when you had that, that long layoff from events and stuff, you were just able to sort of, I don't know, like uh, uh, build back up the confidence in yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, especially during that time, like I got to train as much as I've ever trained and I got to develop myself further and I felt a lot more confident in my abilities and myself just as a dancer. I think when we're competing all the time, like you get used to doing the same moves over and over again. And so for myself personally, I get bored. I get bored of my breaking and I get that feeling of like, ah, I'm not, I'm not even that good. Why am I winning? You know, but when I'm able to train a lot, like I get to experiment with new things and I get to fall in love with the dance. And then, uh, there is definitely a mentality shift there when you're able to practice a lot. And like you said, I think preparation was another factor and a big factor in for myself and for a lot of people is like how you're, how much time you're able to prepare before an event, you know, going into any event, if you're able to prepare and you feel confident in your preparation, obviously going into the event, you're going to feel a lot more confident and going into BC1 again, because I had competed so much before that uh, leading up to it, I felt really confident in all my moves in my abilities in my flow and everything. So what does your current training regime look like now when you're talking about feeling ready for the events and everything else that you said? What mm. does your current regime look like? All right, I'll be completely honest. My current regime isn't that good. <laughs> um, just because like, I think like, post BC1, WDSF, uh, I had a lot going on, uh, going on on in my life personally as well. But just that time is typically like a break time. I feel like it was like December, January. So it's kind of the holidays and stuff like that. And I think now it's starting to ramp up again. Um, I think the best condition I was in was kind of around that time. BC1, WDSF, I was in good shape. Now I'm probably in a little bit less uh, of a good shape than then. And then now I'm going to pick up. Uh, but for me right now, my current regime is not that intense. I would say I train about five to six days a week. Um, and I train, uh, I usually do a workout in the morning and then I'll practice anywhere between two to four hours a day. Um, when it's a little bit more intense, when it starts picking up, I would say, honestly, the amount of time training is still the same. It's just what I'm actually doing at training becomes a little bit different. So right now it's a lot more chill. Like I'm just kind of creating, I'm, just experimenting. I'm trying to develop my stuff further. And then when I'm preparing for an event, it's a lot more like rounds. It's pushing myself and running and drilling my content. Um, 
and honestly, I should be doing that now because I have a few events coming up. Like this weekend, I go to the Space City Classics, um, but I haven't really been doing that. <laughs> so that's something that I will be doing in the next few months moving forward is wrap up my training again. That makes a whole lot of sense. And the last thing I want to ask you is your training regime, right? You're quite open about it because mm -hmm. I've seen you post things about it with your membership uh, program. Is this mm -hmm. something that people can learn when they sign up to work with you? Yeah, yeah. So with my Patreon or my mentorship, like I think I'm very open about this kind of stuff. So even with my Patreon, like I have a monthly training schedule and I just update every single day what I'm doing at practice. So I update how long I practice, what I'm doing at practice, like my workouts, whatever I do that day, it's uploaded onto my Patreon. And then I also will provide insights in terms of like creativity, how I create the methods that I use to create. So I feel like I'm very transparent about the ways that I approach my training. Um, and I think that that is something that maybe a lot of people aren't as transparent about or it's difficult to be transparent because it is difficult to track exactly what I'm doing for the four hours of training and exactly how I feel but I try my best to think those things through and then yeah upload it on my patreon that's dope and we'll leave a link to it as well for anyone that wants to take a look at it and uh get involved and to work with you as well Phil, Perfect. it's been amazing having you here, man. Thanks again for all of your time. And mm -hmm. things are more open at the moment, but I really hope to see you soon, man. Yeah, you as well, man. Thank you for having me.